I'm Focus, the not-so-handy dad. Today we're reviewing Goblets, a hand-thrown paintball kit for kids. These are the tools that come in the kit, and these are the tools that you will need from your own kitchen to complete the project. One ingredient you might not have readily available in your kitchen is distilled water, which will be very important for building the sodium alginate bath that will make the spheres. Working with sodium alginate takes a little bit of technique. The first thing you want to do is spread the powder as evenly as you can over the surface of the water so there is much contact between the powder and the water. This will help it incorporate as you begin mixing. Even if you do that as well as you can, mixing in it is going to take some time. So let's set this aside and create our paint mixture. The first step is dissolving calcium chloride into regular tap water. This is just as simple as dissolving salt into water. Then you're going to add cornstarch to thicken the mixture before adding the color provided in the kit. The amount of the coloring that you add doesn't really matter. You can reserve for some for other uses, but the more you add obviously makes it the more vibrant color. Now that your colors are mixed, we can go back to the alginate bath. It will probably still have some clumps, so if it does, just keep working it with your whisk. If your results vary, it's because I'm using an electric whisk, which gets a little more horsepower than your standard hand whisk. The directions say to add half of a teaspoon of the paint mixture into each one of the wells of your mold. Using a teaspoon is going to make a mess, so I decided to pull out my uh, medicine eyedropper and see if that works any better. Much easier. The other great thing about using an eyedropper is that you can mix colors just like you mix paint and much more easily. For instance, I put just a quarter of a teaspoon in each one of these wells of the mold, and now I can go back and add just a quarter of a teaspoon using my eyedropper to mix the colors. Okay, according to step six, you're supposed to fill the, each one of the wells almost to the top with your calcium chloride solution. I think it doesn't really matter how much you get in there to begin with with the color. You just need enough of the colored solution to give it a good, vibrant color for your paintballs. So in the future I wouldn't worry too much about getting exact proportions of the calcium chloride and cornstarch solutions uh, into this step of the process. To make the spherification process much easier over other techniques, you need to freeze your molds. This takes just under two hours. Alright, my suggestion would be to get some sort of Tupperware or a tray that fits inside of your freezer. It'll make moving the molds easier and protect your freezer from spillage. It's been about an hour and a half, and we're going to check out our frozen soon-to-be paint molds. There they are right there, all frozen in the molds, and ready to go into the sodium alginate bath. The instructions say just push on the edge of them, and they pop right up, and sure enough they do. Alright, the instructions don't say how long you're supposed to leave the spheres in the alginate bath to form the skin. But I do know from other applications that I've seen uh, of this science that the longer you leave it in there, the thicker the membrane will form. So um, theoretically, if it stays in there long enough, it'll be just a solid sphere rather than a sphere with um, you know, gel inside of it. We found that 10 to 12 minutes creates a structurally sound paintball. We did have some rupture issues, but if that happens to you, don't panic. Small ruptures will repair themselves if you just leave them alone. They'll create irregularly shaped paintballs, but that's no big deal. That wraps up this review of Godly's. I give it a total of four out of five stars, which is a pretty good review for this product. We'll see you next time on the Not So Handy Dad.